MUstudent.com and today we're going to continue our tutorial about making our custom light box. So the first thing that we're going to do is I just have a really basic web page. I got nothing on here now and just a little disclaimer you might notice that I'm actually working in Eclipse right now because I'm actually a Java guy and I know 99% of the people are probably watching this are more PHP people. So I don't want you to get scared because I'm not in Dreamweaver or I might not my workspace might not look the exact same as you because I'm still just going to be using HTML. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the fact that I have a JSP and not a .php or a .html doesn't matter. If you're in Dreamweaver or wherever you're doing this code, don't worry about it because it's not going to come into effect. I just like Eclipse because I think it looks sweet. So all I have here is a very basic web page and I can preview it here. So this is just on my local host on port 8086. My uh, package is YouTube and this is called index.jsp. So my package is YouTube and this is called index.php. And all I have is in my title tag, I just have home page. So today we're going to be working on the CSS of our light box. So the first thing that we need to do in order to work on our CSS is to get an external style sheet. So the way you do that is whichever workspace you're in, I need you to create an external style sheet called style dot CSS and make sure it's in the same folder of wherever your like index page is or whatever you're working with. So I'm going to make a style sheet that's going to be in the same folder where my index.jsp page is. So I'm just going to come to web content. I'm going to go new and I'm going to go other and I'm going to come down to web and I'm going to click CSS file and I'm going to call this style dot CSS finish. So now I've created a style sheet. So now that you've created a style sheet, you want to reference to your style sheet. And as you can see, I have style.css here. So in order to reference to our style sheet, we are going to embed the style sheet into our page. So the way you do that is after the title tag, just type in link rel, give me braces, and then type in href and give me empty braces, and then type in type and give me empty braces, and then give me a forward slash and a little uh, closing brace. So this is how you link to a external style sheet. So the first thing that you are going to put in one of these braces is the actual URL to your style sheet. So if it's in the exact same folder, all you need to do is an href, just say style.css. And then in the rel part, you're going to put the fact that this is a style sheet so that when the browser sees this, you want to say, hey, this is a style sheet. So you would just type in here, style sheet. And then for the type, that's kind of like the rel. It's just another way of saying that this is a style sheet. You're just going to type in text forward slash CSS. That means that you're going to be putting CSS um, styles into the style sheet. So if we save this, and let's just uh, put a comment in our style sheet and say hello and comment that out. And now let's go and preview what we have in our browser. And if I view the source on this and I click the style sheet, you should see hello. So that means that we have correctly embedded our style sheet into our page. That means that whatever styles we put over here, it will affect our page. So what we have so far is good. So now what we want to do is we want to actually add the styles for our style sheet. So we are going to make two divs in our body. So come into your body and just type in div and let's give it an ID and close this and then close our div. And then in the ID of this div, why don't we call it, let's call it comments form background so BG and then save that and then I want you to create another div and let's call it div ID and let's call this comment form FG foreground okay so all we've done is in our body tags you've made two divs one for the background and one for the foreground so now what we want to do is we want to make the CSS styles to make those actually show something so because this is an ID we're going to reference this div to make styles on it with a pound sign and its name so I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to write a pound sign because it's an ID and then paste in the name and then give me some braces. So now in here we can put all of the styles for that background. So just type this and let's see what happens. So I'm going to say with 
and I'm going to say 100% semicolon. I'm going to say height colon 100% semicolon. And I'm going to say background dash color colon. And I'm going to say, let's just do pound 000. zero, zero. So that means black. And then I'm going to say position colon fixed semicolon. So let's save this and let's see what happens. So if we come back into our workspace and we refresh it, we will see now we have a background that goes on our whole page. Huh, that's interesting. So, but you're going to see that it doesn't it doesn't get the top of the page. That means that we have to do something with our um, body tags because that means that our margins for our body tags are a little off, so they're not letting us hit the top and the side of the page. So in order to fix that, we need to actually reference this body tag and we need to tell it that we want to actually go to the very top of the page and to the very left of the page. So in order to do that in your CSS styles, just type in body. And that's how you reference your body tag. So when the CSS style sees body, it will say, oh, you want to reference this tag. And then in here, you just need to type in top zero and left zero. And let's see if that worked. Uh, actually, let's, let's change the margin on it. And let's just go zero, 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 and see if that worked. Refresh. Okay, that worked. I'm sorry. So we wanted to change the margin of it so that the, the uh, body actually goes to the very top of the page and to the very left of the page. Sorry about that. So now we actually have made our background for our um, for our light box. But as you can see, that's a pretty strikingly black color. So we're going to want to change the opacity of that color so that, it, so that you can actually see through so that you can see like kind of the background of what the content is. We only want it to back out, black out the um, back. So by doing that, we need to change the opacity. So uh, in our CSS styles, after this, let's type in filter and type in alpha. And in here, type in opacity equals 80. So what this is saying is I want to apply a filter and it's going to apply an opacity of 80. But the problem is there are so many different browsers and all the different browsers have a different way of doing the opacity. So to make sure that all browsers will do the opacity the same way, we need to put all of their special opacity looking things. So keep going along with me, do a dash and then say moz dash opacity colon 0.8. So for this specific browser, when he reads this CSS styles, he'll say, oh, I know what that means. I don't know what this means, but I know this one. And this is saying you want an opacity of 8. So we have to do the other browsers too. So just type in k html dash opacity colon 0 0.8 semicolon. And then the last one is just opacity. And this is for the most modern browsers. And they will understand what that one means. So if we save this, and we go back and refresh, you will see now it looks kind of gray because there actually isn't anything behind it, but now you can kind of see through your background, so it's effectively working, just trust me. So now you can kind of see through it, and now it's working with the black and the white, so that's why it looks kind of gray. But we have effectively changed our opacity. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do the CSS styles for our foreground, so that the foreground will show in the middle. So, as we remember, we made a div that was comment form foreground. So highlight this and come in here and give me a pound and paste that in. So now we will deal with the styles for the foreground. So for me, just type in border, one pixel, solid, and let's go pound CCC, semicolon. And let's give it a width of 550 pixels. Let's give it uh, a background color of, instead of doing white, let's do, I love this color, let's do FCFCFC. And let's say position fixed. And let's see what happens when we do that. So if we come over here and we refresh the page, we will see we got this little itty bitty line up here. And the reason why we only got the line, but we didn't get any content is because we didn't give it a height. So let's give this div a height. So let's say height, and let's call that 350 pixels. 
So if we save it now and come back over, now you will see we have the actual place where we want to put our content in. So we're, we're making progress here. Now we have the actual area where our content will go. So, but as you can see, there, there are a couple problems. Uh, it's on the side of our page for one thing. So we actually want this to be in the middle of our page. So in order to get this div in the center of your page, you're going to have to play around with the left alignment and the margin left. So just follow along with me and you'll understand it in a second. So let's, um, let's do position fixed. And why don't you write for me, let's do left. 50% and uh, let's let's see what happens when we do that so that now you see that it's actually from the very left of the column it's showing our um, div from the very left in the center of the screen that's not exactly what we wanted we want this in the middle but now we need to move this over so that the very middle of this div is actually in the center so a cool trick of how to do that is all you need to type in is margin, comma, or dash, left, semicolon, and then do negative, and then however much is half of the width. Because if you remember, this is in the very middle, so we want to go to half of the width and move it over to the left. So half of 550 is 275, I think. Maybe somebody is laughing. But let's do negative 275, which is meaning I want to move it negative 275 pixels to the left. So if we refresh it, now we have a div in the center of our screen. But we don't want it to be all the way at the top. Let's move it down a little bit. So in order to move it down a little bit, just say top. And let's type in, uh, let's type in... Eh, 50 pixels. Save it, check it out, and now we've moved down a little bit. So you can move down 100 pixels, whatever. But as you can see, if I come out of full screen here, and if we move this in, the div will stay in the center of the screen. How cool is that? So this is going to be the area where we are going to put our content in. So if we typed in something in our index.jsp and we said, wow, that's cool, and we saved this, and we came back to our file and we refreshed it. Wow, that's cool, is in our light box. So we are already we're already way into this thing. So now we've actually made our light box, and this is the area where we are going to put our content in. So you can put whatever you want in here. So in the next tutorial, now that we've actually made the light box, we're gonna start dealing with JavaScript on how to show the light box when we want to see it and how to hide the light box when we don't want to see it. So I hope this tutorial has been useful. This has been just a little refresher on your CSS skills. I know some of you probably already knew CSS, but now you have actually made the light box. So now in the next tutorial, we'll be dealing with the JavaScript on how to show and how to hide that light box. So thank you for watching. This has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com, and I hope this tutorial was useful.